Larian's latest RPG masterwork, Baldur's Gate 3, is an incredible RPG player's playground filled with colourful characters, exciting side quests and intriguing locations to explore. Naturally though, with so many conversations to have, quests to cross off, boxes to loot, pockets to pick, spells to learn, skills to master, and enemies or friends to shove from high places, you can't be expected to dot every I and cross every T unless you're using a guide. Assuming you're alright with a few spoilers, though I will do my best to keep it vague, let's make sure you've crossed off these exceptional encounters. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are the 10 best secrets you need to find in Baldur's Gate 3. Number 10. Recruiting a Baby Owlbear If you, like me, have delighted in mining YouTube for the craziest things Baldur's Gate 3 players have pulled off in the game, including dropping an enlarged owlbear from a vertically advantageous position to decimate a baddie, you'll know owlbears are not to be trifled with. Then again, they are pretty darn cute, especially the tiny ones. Early in Act 1, you can discover a fairly obscured cave containing an owlbear and her cub. If you'd like to take that cub for yourself, good news, you totally can. First, you have to be a terrible person and kill its mom, which is that much harder if you use speak with animals to talk to her first. Then the little guy runs to the goblin camp where you have a couple of different approaches to liberate said cub. Then it'll rock up at your camp after a handful of long rests. If you already knew that one existed and you're looking for something a little bit more secret, then how about the fact that you can get an achievement for petting both your pup companion Scratch and the owlbear cub at the same time. And said achievement is of course called, you've got two hands for a reason. Number 9. The Necromancy of Thay If you didn't think books could be scary, you clearly aren't acquainted with the Necromancy of Thay. The book is hidden within a trap-riddled cellar in the Blighted Village. Once you've talked or fought your way through a magic mirror, you'll get your hands on the thing and all your in-party companions will have something ominous to say about it. You'll also get to choose to destroy it or read it. That said, you might think there's not much more to this quest since the book doesn't appear to be readable. There is, however, a gem you can find to open it. It's located in another squirreled away cellar accessible through a well, though this one is peppered with spiders who very much want to disembowel you. So, you know, good luck with that. The easiest way to deal with the boss of the group, a phase spider matriarch, is to shove her off into the depths of her own lair. So give that a go. We won't spoil all the secrets the book has to hold, except to say that it might help you out with some less than alive folks in the Forgotten Realms. Number 8. The World's Smartest Ogre Ogres are, as a general rule, not the brightest bunch. If we're not being diplomatic about it, it's fair to say they absolutely min-maxed into brute force strength and away from intelligence. That's why it comes as a bit of a shock when you encounter a shockingly well-spoken ogre with a couple of buddies in the Blighted Village. Of course, few things are as surface level as they might first appear in the Forgotten Realms, and if you're happy to get a little bit murdery, you'll see there's something else going on here. You see, it so happens that the smarty pants ogre named Lump the Enlightened has the warped headband of intelligence on him, which has granted him an intelligence score of 17. Ogre plus magic helm equals smart ogre. It might only be a small little secret, but it's a delightful detail and the perfect example of developer Larian going the extra mile to create a dense and vibrant world. Number 7. The Kuo Tower Tricky to find but absolutely rewarding if you're able to is the Kuo Toa in the Underdark. The Kuo Toa are a fish tribe located in an obscured area called the Festering Cove, wherein they worship a god called Bu'al. Let me be clear, that's not Baal, that's Bu'al. Finding the entrance to this wildly memorable spot and its colourful inhabitants is no picnic. You'll need to spot a hidden hole and scale a rock to reach it, but the entertaining ongoings within are absolutely worth the search, or worth revisiting if you happen to miss this one. I won't spoil everything that happens in here, suffice it to say there's a decent chance that this god isn't exactly who they appear to be, and there's plenty of choices to make and entertainment to be found. Number 6. Us you first encounter us in Baldur's Gate 3's tutorial. If you're trying to place the little guy, he makes quite the impression as he's an intellect devourer who you can adopt as a temporary companion by selecting and passing some specific checks. It might seem like its cameo is all done and dusted, but assuming you didn't kill it off, us can be found again in the morgue in the Mind Flayer colony at the end of Act 2. If you decide to free the little guy, it can join your party as a familiar. Us will give you an item you can use to summon him, after which he'll follow you around. As a cute little addition, Us has a secondary form for when you're around NPCs who might be a little suspicious about your new intellect devourer pal. 
Said form is a little kitty, so that's lovely, and a little more pettable than the brain with legs vibe. Number five, finding Omelum. Now there are many quests and encounters in Baldur's Gate 3 that you will just assume have reached their logical conclusion, but with a little more digging, you'll see there's even more quests to be uncovered. Such is the case with the awakened Mind Flayer Omelum, who you'll find in the Myconid colony in the Underdark. The Mind Flayer is a part of the Society of Brilliance, trying to discover a food source for its people that isn't, you know, brains. You'll help it out in Act 1, but after crossing off its quests, it mysteriously goes missing. It isn't until Act 3 you can actually happen upon it again. You'll need to make your way to the Iron Throne underwater prison via Submersible in order to find him, but that's just the first hurdle. After that, you have six turns to save both Omelum and the other prisoners trapped in the prison, if you can pull it off. Do so and you'll get a bundle of gratitude and a bundle of loot for your heroics. Number four, the forbidden romance option. Okay, this one is a huge spoiler for the end game, so if you don't want to know what happens at the very end of the game, come meet me over at number three, otherwise I'll try to be as vague as I can. At the game's conclusion, you'll come face to face with the High Illithid, and you'll have a pretty huge decision to make regarding your allegiances. But I'm not going to spoil that for you, nor is it what this entry is about. Rather, the tentacle guy hits on you and asks if you'd like to get it on and deepen your relationship. Not what we were expecting. Hilariously, you have to pass a history check to figure out where its mouth is. If you want to, you can go ahead and get down and dirty with the Mind Flayer. And look, what you decide to do in that moment is between you and your god, or you and your horrified cop party chat on Discord. Number three, eggs are eggs. You'll run into Lady Esther in the Mountain Pass and she'll ask you to get her a Githyanki egg, as in steal a Githyanki egg. As you can imagine, the Githyanki are not stoked about this but there are a few strategies to persuade or brute force your way into taking it anyway. Although if you happen to have a silver tongue and a spare egg on your hands, you don't have to jump through these hoops at all. If you did a good job exploring that owlbear cave I mentioned earlier, which you should have because there's some great loot in there, you may have noticed there's an owlbear egg in the mother's nest. You can actually turn this egg into Lady Esther instead using one of two tactics. By passing a couple of tricky persuasion checks, you can either convince her it's the egg she wants, trick her into thinking this egg is better than the one she's after, or convince her to trick her employers with the owlbear egg, assuring her the deception will work. I mean, surely one egg is just as good as any other egg. Number two, taking Commander Zalk's sword the easy way. Just about the first secret you encounter in Baldur's Gate 3, or at least the one all your friends will make sure you know upon kicking off your first playthrough, is that the Devil Commander Zulk can actually be defeated in the game's first area. This is absolutely something you'll want to pull off, mainly because the sword he drops is really good, but the battle is a pain in the ass, and it's obvious the game just wants you to hurry up and not engage with him. But you're a hero, and more importantly, you want that sword. But there's no need to wear your party out trying to end the dude. Instead, you can try this easy method. Shadowheart has a command spell called Drop that you can swap in through your menu that makes the big red guy drop the sword, so if you just want to pick it up and head on out, you absolutely can. Number 1. The Guild of Great Genius Okay, now you've sat with me through 9 legit secrets you can absolutely find in the lush vibrant world of the Forgotten Realms, so I hope you'll forgive me one little unconventional entry at the end here. If you've been sitting there all video long saying you've found every single entry on your own so far, then I'm betting you didn't find this one on your own. That's because the location you discover it is in the EULA, as in the game's end user license agreement. Therein you can find the following. Upon accepting this pact, you take on an additional quest to submit to Larian one recording of a chant, song, text, poem, or interpretive dance performed by you and extolling your interest in the Forgotten Realms. Should you decline to undertake and finish this quest within the first three winters following your acceptance of this pact, you forfeit subsequent fame, fortune, and or infamy as a founding member of our Guild of Great Genius. What is the Guild of Great Genius? Well, to be honest, we have absolutely no idea, but that's your secret quest to undertake if you'd like to, adventurer. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment box if you found any other juicy secrets that you absolutely must share so the rest of us can check them out in Baldur's Gate 3. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my ex account where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great gaming lists.